Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Medic Foundation plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson and today I will be demonstrating the uh, <coughs> new tools that we've been developing here in the last uh, little bit. Primarily that's the uh, this toolbar right here and it's the uh, polyline stem wall, interior bearings and the stem wall step function. So basically I'll put that right back where it was and what I've done is I've gone ahead and just used the grid tool, created a grid, and then quickly uh, thrown together just kind of a simple layout for a, a foundation that will uh, be a little bit more complicated with a couple of steps here and uh, and three uh, interior bearing supports, basically 12 feet on center. <coughs> so, yeah, I just want to kind of demonstrate some of these new features. I think now with stem wall, this stem wall polyline tool uh, should give you a lot more flexibility as far as um, generating more complicated foundations. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to wrap around counterclockwise. I, it doesn't really matter which way you go, but um, <coughs> the way the uh, plugin is set up is when you click on this, you'll notice that the you can change the direction left or right, which changes which side is the exterior. Uh, or which side the exterior is created on. So if I choose left, then typically you want to wrap around this way. Uh, and you know, you can change this up at any time and go back in and edit as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave everything right here as a default. Leave the reinforcement as what it is, the anchor bolts what it is. Um, <coughs> yeah, just, just kind of leave everything as default first to start with. And I'm going to start here at this point, and I'm going to start this uh, polyline stem wall. So I'm going to start right here, create my first point, and then select the second point. And you can see as you do it now, um, the preview of the wall is being created. And you notice that the th the thick line, um, the thick preview line is the is always going to be the exterior of the wall. Okay, so this will be the interior. This will be the exterior. So let's go ahead and get over to this uh, step area and I'll just end it right there and then currently the way I have it set up is when you get to where you want to terminate you just hit the down arrow in Windows um, I would like to use the enter or return key but I haven't quite figured out the way to make that work so right now it's just the down arrow okay so that goes ahead and creates that first section and then <coughs> now right now I could go ahead and create the step um, the steps, I mean. Um, however, I'm going to just uh, go ahead and finish this up. So I'm going to create two steps, one here and one there, and it's just going to be a bottom step. So the step will be in the bottom of the footing, or at the, at the bottom of the stem wall. So we're going to keep the upper top level of this uh, stem wall all at the same level. So I'm just going to leave a four foot gap here for that uh, step. And now, but with this next piece of foundation, I want to drop my stem wall height down, let's say 48 inches. Um, and you know, it could be whatever you want, but let's just stick with that. And then I'll start drawing the next uh, segments here of the or section of the stem wall. And okay, and let's see, four feet there. And, you know, there's no particular order you need to do this in. You could create the, um, you know, the, the stem wall piece first, and then create a step here, and then create this section, or, or you know, or create the steps first. It, it, do, it doesn't really matter. It's just however you want to do that. Um, so there we go. So I'm done with that. So now I've got basically my uh, the overall polylines done. So now I'm going to use the step tool. So that guy's right here. And... <coughs> So you basically have three step types. You have a top step, a bottom step, and a double step. So the top step will basically have the step on the top of the stem wall. And the bottom, of course, will be on the bottom. So it'll step the footing, but keep the top uh, at the same level. And the double step will step uh, both top and bottom. So we're just going to go ahead and demonstrate the uh, bottom step. And in this case, we're going to do a stem wall start length of 24 inches. And I'm not going to go into a lot of the details on each one of these yet. Um, just This is just kind of an overview video of how I would use it. And I'm going to do an end length of that. And then my start height is 48. My end height is 24. So that means I start at 48 deep. And then I go to 24 deep. Okay, so that, that sounds right. <coughs> 
and um, let's see yeah we'll throw the transition block in there and we're not going to hide edges right now we'll, we'll do that in, uh, later but so let's go ahead and hit update on this and then all we do is we just select our first point and you can see it kind of gives you a preview of that step piece then you, know, you can go any direction all you need to do is basically put the direction okay so I'm just going to click there and there's my step okay and notice the transition piece that it puts in you can turn that on and off right here uh, okay and so now let's go over here and now we are still going the same direction left and so that puts you know we we, we start here and we go in a kind of a counterclockwise direction so now we're going from a 24 inch start height to a 48 inch end height so we'll hit update and now we'll select our point there and you can see it gives you that preview and we'll just hit go okay and so so there's our steps we've got our steps in all right and you know of course we can always go back in and edit these up uh, let's say we want to edit this we want to get rid of this transition block just right click on it hit edit stem wall step and we can turn the fridging transition off okay so there we go so now you've removed that transition piece <coughs> All right. Um, let's go ahead and just take, move this, uh, hide this grid for now. We don't need this grid. And um, so yeah, so that's per you know you can go back in and change that up. It's just the nice thing is that everything's parametric with with these three new tools, and so everything can be adjusted and altered at any time. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add the interior bearings. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting because in these two cases we're going to want the bearings to be at the same height as the stem wall here and then on this one we're going to want it to be the same height as this section so basically 24, 24 and 48 okay so we'll just start here and let's see let's grab the uh, this okay and we'll say uh, let's go with the stud wall uh, bearing type and so I'm going to show you first first of all what happens. So if you click here, you basically you just click on the uh <coughs> right there where it you know you you want that centered up that 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 uh, bearing. And you just click right there. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is that this is uh 1.5 five inches proud of this wall and that is actually on purpose and that can be set with the, the seal plate offset okay I'm going to close that out um, <clears throat> I'm going to click edit on this and what that does is you know typically you've got a seal plate here running all the way around your foundation and you want your joists uh, that are resting on that seal plate you know to come across and rest on this beam so you want this actually projecting like it is uh, above the concrete so that it can catch those beams or not G beams sorry floor joists as they run a, run perpendicular to it so that's the reason of the seal plate offset okay I mean you can set that to whatever value you want it doesn't have to be 1.5 inches but that's basically what the typical value is okay so the next thing you're going to notice here is also that this footing is running into that concrete there and the same can be said of the other side so what you can do is that's why we have this uh, footing offset start and end so if you subtract and I just happen to know that, that edge is three inches um, projecting past the stem wall because it's a six inch wall and a 12 inch footing so basically a minus value will bring it in okay so I'm gonna go ahead and hit update on that and you'll notice now that it <clears throat> of course, the, the the beam and the and the posts stay where they're at, but the footing will actually be retracted by whatever that offset is, and the same on the other side. And you can actually offset the other direction, positive, and that'll project it longer, or uh, however you want to do that. Okay, so let's see now. Let's go ahead and create. Um, yeah, let's do one there there of course so
Now I'm going to go ahead and hit stud wall. And I'm going to do minus 3 and minus 3. Just take care of that initially so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, update, yeah, 2 top plate quantity 2. We can set that to 2, 1, or 3 as well. So I just go ahead and select this point here. And I'm going to select that point right there. And now you can see I've got a stud wall instead of post and beam. And we've already offset that appropriately, so that's all good. And now we're going to come down here, and you know, you've still got the menu, uh, the draw menu open. This, the tool's still active, even after you create one, so you can go ahead and create another without having to restart everything. Um, in this case, though, I want to change the bearing height to 48 inches. And we hit update on that, and then I will go ahead and jump across here. And hit my spacebar, which jumps me out of the tool. Okay, so perfect. So we've got our lower bearing here, and you notice everything is all on the right plane. And you notice that all of these uh, interior bearings are sitting up one and a half inches, ready to accept those floor joists. And so that's pretty much it. I mean, it's you know I think it's a fairly uh, accurate to say that it's it can. Uh, get a lot of work done. So I'm going to just go ahead and hide this other little little pre or uh, <coughs> template. <coughs> we don't, we don't need these guys either. We'll just delete those. So <coughs> in a nutshell, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, you know, you could get a lot more convoluted type of foundations uh, with a lot more dips and bends and what have you. But um, uh, I will also be adding in a CMU option for the interior bearings and probably also a CMU option for the stem wall itself. But if you have any questions, let me know or any feature requests. Um, yeah, I think uh, it, it should be also mentioned that, um, you know, there's a lot of options now. Um, you know, you can go ahead and edit this. Uh, for instance, we could turn on, um, let's see, our drain pipe. I'm going to go ahead and update that. And close that. I'm going to edit this too. And I'm going to turn on this drain pipe. And you know, you go ahead and you could turn on the drain pipe all the way around if you like. I'm just updating uh, these couple here that just so you can see what happens. So the nice thing is with this, uh, the drain pipe thing is, I you know, I have it set up so that when you have a stem wall, polyline stem wall, you know, meeting a step everything should line up perfectly so that you know that is continuous all the way around that foundation anyways um yeah this is pretty much uh just a quick preview of the uh this new toolbar with the polyline stem wall the interior bearing and the stem wall step if you have any feature requests questions or uh you know any other comments please uh feel free to contact me anytime and i appreciate your support thank you